Pinky the Jelly Monster wants to make a feature in this video. Alright, this is part 2 of the 3 part installment, Camera Basics for the Absolute Beginner. In case you haven't watched it, I linked it in the description. This episode will be scripted so it'll go a little smoother, cause I realised in the last episode it felt a little choppy and it's gonna be a super long episode. So if it helps, get a cup of coffee, some indomie, and just watch it through. Alright, I won't waste any more time, let's begin. I'll be splitting this episode into two segments, hardware and kinda software-ish. To start, when you take a photo, there are five things that go into making it look the way you want it to look. There's father aperture, mother shutter speed, sister white balance, brother ISO, and the holy focal length. Now, when you're taking a photo, there are many elements at play. So let's start with the money item, the lens. Focal length. What is focal length? When I first got into cameras and I was researching focal lengths, to this day I still don't know exactly what it points to but I'll try my best to explain how it affects image. If you don't want to bother about the technicalities of it all, I'll leave you with this statement and you can skip ahead. The shorter your focal length, meaning a smaller focal length number, the wider you're seeing. Okay, let's get into the technicalities. Example, if you have a lens that is 18mm, it will capture a wider field of view as compared to a lens that is 50mm. Now, why millimeters? If you really have to know, it basically means if your focus is as close to the lens as possible, the minimum focus distance is blank mm away from the lens. So an 18mm lens can only focus on objects as close as 18mm or 1.8cm away and a 200mm can only focus on objects as close as 200mm away or 20cm away. As mentioned in the previous episode, zoom lenses have a variable focal length. So you could have an 18 to 135 lens that, when zoomed in, goes from in between 18mm to 135mm. Now, when I refer to the different types of zoom lenses, generally anything below 30mm will be a wide angle lens. Anything between 30 to 100 will just be referred to as a normal lens, and anything beyond is a telephoto, tele meaning distant. Next, focus. This is a very physics heavy topic and requires its own video in order to do it justice but I'll make it short and sweet. Done. That's all I can give you. I really don't know how to make it easy to digest. Next, aperture. My absolute favourite part of a lens. This segment will be the most simplified and comprehensive explanation of aperture so don't worry. What is aperture? Okay, have you ever seen that type of thing where it looks like the barrel of a gun, this little part of the lens that basically controls the opening of the lens. Think funnel. Imagine light, in this case, is water. If you have a funnel with a really narrow opening, not a lot of light is going to be passing through the lens, is it? Now, wider funnel, more light. Next, I want you to imagine that the amount of time it takes for the water to fully go through the funnel is the f-stop number. The wider the aperture, the less time it takes, the lower the f-stop number. Though the f-stop number is not a direct correlation to time, that is taken care of by the shutter speed. It's a nice way to remember it. The smaller your f-stop number, the wider your aperture. It wasn't so hard! Now, depth of field. This is the science shit. To put it simply, depth of field can be seen as a dartboard. Imagine the bullseye is really wide. It's super easy to hit the bullseye, right? That is deep depth of field. Conversely, a shallow depth of field means the bullseye is super tiny. Now, if you were to hit a bullseye that's super narrow, it looks impressive as fuck, right? That's the type of depth of field that will get you the subject that is in focus with a super blurry background. The type of stuff I see Instagrammers try to fake with their little dinky phone cameras and editing softwares. But y'all are for real. So let's do it for real. But, though shallow depth of field is undeniably sexy. Imagine trying to take a photo of the Golden Gate Bridge, but only one car on the bridge is in focus, and the rest of the image is really dark and blurry. Not really suitable for the situation, so depth of field should be altered to fit the situation and the story you're trying to tell. Alright, take a short break, go piss and shit and do your business. I gotta take a break, my mouth is damn dry. I'll see you in a bit. Alright, we're back. Now we've gone over all that you need to know in a lens, let's move on to the camera body. We're gonna start with shutter speed. What is shutter speed? Remember the previous analogy I used of the funnel and the water? 
Now imagine at the bottom of the funnel this little tap. The shorter you keep that tap open, the less water flows through. The more you keep the tap open, the more water flows through. Your goal is to fill a cup of water to the brim. This is where you balance the size of the opening of the funnel with the amount of time that you keep the tap open. I bet it just went, holy shit, I get it now. It just clicked, right? So the wider your aperture, the shorter your shutter speed needs to be. The narrower your aperture, the longer your shutter speed needs to be in order to achieve the same level of brightness. Boom. Done. Next, we move on to ISO. Now, what is ISO? Think of it as your light sensitivity. This one is intuitive. Super simple. The higher your ISO, the brighter your image. But ISO should be the last thing you want to resort to. Let me explain why. Take a look at this image. This is taken with the correct shutter speed, correct aperture, everything is right. Now, I shorten the shutter speed, lower the aperture, and crank up the ISO. Look in the background. Do you see this conflict, porridge, fuzzy kind of look? That is image noise. I won't go into detail as to why this happens, but just to let you know, it is not ISO that causes this. Tony and Chelsea Northrup made a video on why this happened, so I'll link it in the description. You should go check it out, it's damn informative. Okay, so I realised while editing this that I didn't talk about Kelvin. Kelvin? Eh? Fuck Kelvin. <laughs> I didn't talk about white balance. So, white balance is essentially how you want to calibrate your image to suit the light environment that you're in. So let's say you are in a school hall where all the lights are warm white. You will want to set your white balance to match that so that when your image is taken, it comes out as flat white, like a normal one. So it is measured in the ranges of Kelvin and the lower the number, the warmer the light is. So a 2700 Kelvin light will be warmer than a 5500 Kelvin light. So that's how you calibrate your white balance. But this is not as important as all the other aspects because you can adjust it after the fact. Alright, let's go back. So now, you gotta take a photo. What do you do? You take the pink ranger, the red ranger, the black ranger, the green ranger, and the blue ranger, and you combine these into a giant megazord to take a photo. All these elements that I just taught you will help you mix your light to paint the perfect photo. That's all that photography really is anyways. Painting a picture with photons. Good job guys. You made it. You can rest now. I hope this was helpful. This was a damn fun one to make. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Go shoot some sick photos. See y'all in the next one. Farewell.